Beaumont and welcome to Get Published TV. This is the only dedicated show on the internet to help you to write, publish and market your own best selling book. Now I'm really excited about today's episode because I've got a good friend with me. Someone has actually been featured in one of my books. This book here is called Secrets of Great Success Coaches Exposed. And this is his uh, photo up here. His name is Anders Sorman Nielsen. And uh, why I'm excited about um, having him here is not only he's been featured in one of my books, but more recently he has actually published his own book. And uh, this is it right here. It was published just a couple of weeks ago, in fact, so we can pretty much say it's hot off the press. And uh, I'm really looking forward to um, talking to Anders. And so for people out there that want to get published, this guy has done it in the last couple of months, so I'm really excited to uh, hear what he's got to say. So, Anders, thanks for joining us. Good to be here with you, Dale. All Good right. to see you again. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about what is the theme of the book? What, what is this book about? Okay, so I guess I guess the book, in, in a nutshell, is, is for anyone who's interested in innovation, change management, generational trends, and really how to how to cope and upgrade their thinking in these very wacky times that we're living in, mm. uh, how to really make sense of the vibe of what's going on, the economy's in the flux, uh, we've um, elected a president uh, whose very name rhymingly reminds us of Iraq Hussein Osama. Things are a little bit strange and wacky and uh, are constantly changing in the world and um, this book is really my attempt at making people understand what's going on in the world mm. uh, to get a feel for the dynamic of the trends that are shaping yeah. our economic landscape yeah. and then be able to, uh, to really position themselves optimally to actually take advantage of some of the positive trends that are driving the, the business landscape at the mm. moment. Great. So the book is called Think Funky and the subtitle is Upgrade Your Thinking. Um, and this book is one of the, if I can use the term, sexiest books that I have ever <laughs> held in my hand. Um, and I wish you'd be able to reach through the camera right now and, and feel this book. But uh, tell us about um, the, the cover. We can obviously know it's a hard cover, but tell us about the cover, the materials used. And tell us about um, the, the, uh, the pages and also... Uh, and I might flick through it as well while we're doing this uh, yeah. because this is a book that you would not see often um, as far as the attention to details concerned. So tell us about the book and then why you chose to make some of these decisions. Okay. Well, I guess I guess the first thing was um, I, I had to think to, to myself, Dale, when I go into a bookstore, what are the kind of books that grab my attention? And um, normally when I go into a bookstore, I sort of wander into the design section because that's where the most beautiful books are mm. most of the time. And um, now you've got to tell people you're Swedish, of course. I'm, I am Swedish. Swedish people are famous for design, <laughs> so that probably had a bit to do with it. I'm guessing. Too. Yeah, I mean, it is important to I me. Mean, I think I think really books, like it's really important for books these days to be beautifully beautifully designed and. Um, to grab people's attention. It is something that also will, I think, position books in a premium fashion in, in bookstores. So we did go for a high-end design of the book and also we sourced the, you know, the front cover material in Holland. It's a savannah cloth from Holland. It was the only one in the world that was, um, that could be, um, uh, that had the exact PMS or Pantone color that we were after for this particular book, which is which is on brand with uh, with my company called Think. So that was an important aspect to the book. So we sourced the material; they flew it in business class, as I like to say, from Holland <laughs> to Australia, um, and uh, and then beautifully hand bound in Australia. Uh, using a, an old book binding process from the 1920s. Uh, so we have a little video which shows the book binding and it's all hand stitched and hand done on this old beautiful um, uh, machine from the 1920s. Yes. So all, that whole process for me was kind of important because really I wanted this book to be almost like a manifesto of my thoughts. Yes. And when I think manifesto, I think old. I think you know 19th century, and I think of political Strolls, manifestos, etc. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted, while the book is very modern and has a modern design, we also wanted it to have a, a feel and a grounding in history. Uh, so the the process of design and the process of manufacture was actually really important to us uh, mm. as well, and um, it's something we feel very strongly about in in terms of the value of the book, not just the content, but the entire entire thinking behind um, the production of it. Mm. Now, um, other than the fact that you're you're Swedish and you have a, a like a love of design, there's obviously some sort of marketing 
um, intent behind why you choose to have such a high standard when it yeah. comes to the production design. So do you want to talk us through that as well? Yeah, I mean, I think I think for, for me it was important. Um, many people ask me, they go, oh, yeah, you know, you, like, are you going to just get someone to ghostwrite it for you? Are you going to have it so you can just hand it out as a business card? And I said... <laughs> No to both both questions. I said I'm going to write the the entire book myself because it's my thought, uh, my thoughts. I only I can really command that IP and get it down on paper because I wanted it to be a manifesto, so to speak. So yeah. that was the first important thing. And then secondly, we just wanted to add value to people, so people could almost have. I think the idea behind the book was to almost create a an analog GPS. This book really is designed for people to be able to navigate a constantly ch changing business landscape. Now, how do you do that? We all have a GPS in our car. Uh, so we created the models in the book, etc., to almost be like a GPS whereby you can navigate your way forward in the business landscape by knowing your position mm. in relation to old landmarks of things that have happened, such as Web 1.0 to its Web 2.0 cousin to the time we're moving into now, which is web 3.0 so we thought okay how can we fuse an analog gps with one of my other greatest and most uh, fascinating and most loved tools that i use all the time which is a moleskin diary so there's plenty of white pages in this book as well so people can take notes and do their own thought dumps brain dumps uh, and doodling mm. uh, which i believe is the beginning of innovation wow. and really and really fuse those with also something that's beautifully beautifully yes. designed yeah. uh, so it's kind of a hybrid of those 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 different uh, versions of thinking I mm. guess and because yeah. you've really had it such a high um, standard when it comes to all of your your branding your personal image your website and I think it's you know really important that you're consistent yeah. with all those things as yeah. well if you brought out a book that was printed on poor quality paper and had a very flimsy cover yeah. it just would be a, a little bit of a conflict compared to you know who you are and what you stand for so it's great yeah. that you've gone with that consistent feel it certainly stands out um, and so you know I'm really loving what I see right now um, tell me about um, tell me about how well, one of the challenges maybe with this book because it's about upgrading your thinking it's about how we can um, survive in these changing times things are changing so quickly did you ever Whoops, we've just uh, had a bit of a uh, door slam there. But did you worry that the book would date very, very quickly? It sounds like you've taken that into consideration and you've used a lot of yeah. historical sort of facts so that way it's not going to date. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit of, little bit of both. Um, we've done a few things to, to keep it sort of uh, front of mind for people. Um, one, of, one of the things we're going to do is to, to keep releasing a book every year. It won't necessarily be a, a new edition, but we'll, we'll change the colour and keep the theming of this book uh, also, it is, I guess, a book that describes the period of 1990 to 2000 as what I call Thinking 1.0, then the period of 2000 to 2010 as Thinking 2.0, and then 2010 and 2020 to what I call Thinking 3.0. So in a sense, it's a futurist book as well. Right. It really looks to this next period uh, of 2010 to 2020 that we're now moving into, mm. uh, what I call Thinking 3.0. And we're at that paradigm shift in 2009 now, uh, where we're really seeing a big shakeout in terms of the economy, uh, and I think the successful companies, the successful individuals now, will be, be people who really get this 3.0 thinking that is compatible with the Web 3.0 world that we're moving into in 2010. So in a sense, it's futurist. So uh, in in that sense, you know, while we're using a lot of case studies and a lot of fresh material, uh, a lot of it's based on trend reports in 2008. Yeah. So it's still very current. Um, but it is also making forward projections based upon historical data, present data, uh, and a lot of case studies that we've been using for the book. So I'm not worried it will date. We've, we've done a few things. Um, if you look at the back cover here, you, you may notice that we've actually got a little banner on the back, which actually means we can update the book very easily in terms of how we position it. Yes. Uh, and this back banner... Um, is something we thought about because we thought, hey, you know, if, if, if something does change in the economy or something drastically comes out uh, that is in tune with some of the predictions we have made in the book of what we think will happen in 2010, 2011, yes. uh, once again, we can put that on the back cover in our next, um, in our next distribution to bookstores and at conferences, etc. So it actually allows us a bit of flexibility in terms Absolutely. of not just the content, but also 
really positioning the book in the forefront of people's minds. Mm. And I know one of the things we've spoken about on Get Published TV is having sections such as this, um, or if you have a book which has a, a, doesn't um, have a sliding um, you know, piece of paper on the back, you can use the inside back cover to have customized messages if you're pre-selling to major corporations. Yeah. So if um, you're doing a, a keynote presentation and um, the event organizer buys 500 copies, then this is a great thing that you can quickly just change and make a customized version for that organization. So Absolutely. that's a good tip. Um, let's talk about a couple of other um, things that would benefit people watching. Um, you wrote the whole book yourself. Um, having gone through that experience, do you have a couple of tips or <laughs> hints for how you got your ideas, and yeah. this is this is quite um, you know as you say futuristic in the fact. So it wasn't that you were just rehashing old information. You had to really dig deep inside yourself, and I imagine it was a you know challenging experience, but you've got through it. So what are some tips that you can give other people wow. about writing? I think uh, I mean what the the way my brain works it is is that it sort of synthesizes information. I might be out um, speaking and. In, in, Bangkok or somewhere, I might see a, a food stall and I see that they're using an iPhone and I'm going, hey, what does this signify? And then I might be in another country another day and I might see a really cool ad on the ground where there's like a, a, a you know, one of those markings for a dead body that's actually an ad for a TV series. And I go, hey, what does this actually mean? And then I might come back to Australia and, and see another trend or another example of something that actually is very much in tune with both the iPhone and this guerrilla style of marketing. And I sort of go, hey, what's the vibe here? What's, what does this mean? And when I, when I go out and research, I always sort of bear that in mind. How do I actually connect the dots? So I try to be quite diverse in my research mm. uh, and in just the way I live life. The way I do it is to take notes on my iPhone in my Moleskine diary and just take down everything that I see and observe and then try and make sense of it, put it to my subconscious to sort of mm. go, hey, sort this all out. What does it mean? Do you have your diary um, here with you now? I don't have. Uh, I do have a diary with me at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to just, um, just grab it and just sort yeah, of show I'll, people because we I'll want to be highly visual here and uh, and show you as much as we can. You bring your iPhone over as well. These are just different tools. Um, you've got to come up with your own format that's going to work for you. We've spoken about in previous videos some different techniques, um, but let's just talk about the ones that Anders uses. He's got his iPhone. So here. I guess on the iPhone, one of the things I always do is um, I grab lots of photos. So I go into camera. If I see something like one of my one of my clients the other day, I'm doing. They've actually got me on a retainer to do uh, trend spotting for them. So I write them a trend report every every two months uh, that is specified and tailored to their particular company. And so I was at the hairdresser the other day, as you can tell, and uh, mm -hmm. as I'm there, it's actually one of the best places to do research because I read all these magazines that I don't normally read. And I saw a really interesting article for someone that was doing organic products in a market where you wouldn't normally think that people were doing organic products for, uh, but they changed some of the the chemicals and exchange them for organic produce. And so I just take a photo, send it to my client, yeah. uh, and then it also goes immediately to my notes section in the uh, in the iPhone. I don't know whether you can see this, but I add notes to the uh, to the iPhone section when I get good ideas so that I really capture them all the time, make space for new ideas, and then I go over this sort of once a week, once every two weeks to just check some of those yeah. ideas and where they might fit in a book as well. Great. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is actually an electronic version now of, uh, of my Moleskine diary. I use what's called a LiveScribe pen, yep. uh, which actually records everything that you write. So you have it in, uh, you have it in um, hard copy like this, uh, yes. Dale, and also uh, everything is actually captured to an online PDF as well. So if you ever lose your diary, which I always fear that I'm going to do, uh, then, uh, then I actually have everything backed up mm. uh, on my computer as well in PDFs. So, so this is something that few people have actually heard of before. It looks like a normal diary, but it has hundreds and hundreds of tiny little dots on the piece of paper. And you have a special pen that you write with, and what it does is it, it knows, because of where those dots are positioned, everything that you're writing and it basically, without even taking a scan or without even taking a photocopy, it just automatically knows from those dots what you've written and it converts that into an electronic file that you can back up. So it's a really amazing piece of technology. What's, what's the name of it again? It's, uh, it's called LiveScribe. The pen is called LiveScribe. The other thing I do with my clients now is that I usually get someone in the meeting or someone in a keynote, uh, in a keynote from the audience to actually take notes. 
and it also records sound, which means that uh, all the notes that this person is taking during the conference syncs with the sound of my voice and the interaction in the room, and once again becomes a new product for mm. for for for, uh, for my clients. So once again, something that they really appreciate. Love it, love it. Now let's just talk about a couple of other things. Um, talk about the book launch because you recently um, launched your book just um, last week or the week before. Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks yeah. ago. So tell us about how that worked for you. Um, what a couple of uh, things that went well, maybe didn't go so well, and if you have any tips for other people that may be yeah. looking to do their own book launch. We did two things. So we launched it in Melbourne at DesignX, which is a design uh, expo slash conference. So that's a um, really good thing to pick up on because what you may want to do instead of running your own independently, whatever your book is about, let's just say you had a book about um, UFOs, for example, yeah. then you find out when the nearest uh, UFO convention is on, and then that can be an opportunity to piggyback on that particular event and launch it there. So um, that's exactly what you've done. And very powerful in terms mm. of having a deadline too. Yes. Uh, when you know you've <laughs> got to deliver it. So that, that really helped us. So that was on May 1st. Uh, yep. We launched it at DesignX, which was great because we got a lot of uh, positive media uh, attention as well. Uh, we had, um, had a very high uh, per capita uh, sale ratio at the event as well. I got to sign books just before Jamie Jury, uh, who of course is uh, a, famous, a bit, Australian. famous Australian uh, uh, landscape architecture and designer, who also has his own TV show. So we got good media through that. And then we actually ran our own private launch in Sydney. And we just thought, hey, how do we create an experience that's not just a launch, come for a few drinks and, and buy the book, but uh, we really sort of went all out and uh, had, we did have it at home. Uh, I've got, um, I'm lucky to be living in a really funky sort of uh, designer warehouse, which is really great. So the space was worked really well with, with this launch, but um, we had some amazing sponsors who were there to put a lot of... Um, artwork up on the walls we had an amazing photographer there we had a camera crew so we'll be bringing out a video of the mm. launch very soon we had a dj we all did, we did um, handmade food or um, homemade food for everyone um we tell had us about a, yeah. getting sponsors because some people would think oh well if i'm going to put on a launch i just have to pay for everything yourself but obviously you had people donate their services yeah. How were you able to get them to do that? I guess uh, we had about 100, uh, 120 people at the launch. So it was, uh, it was quite, quite a few people actually and um, a lot of my clients as well. So um, I think I had people donate their times as MCs, as photographers, as artists. We had a design store donate a whole, a whole lot of candles. So the, the place smelled really beautiful as well. <laughs> um, we had... Um, we had some sponsoring for alcohol as well, uh, and uh, we also had the event coordination sponsored. So really, it was in the end, it was probably a, a 15 to 20k event if we're just looking at what the hard cost would have been had we done all of that yes. and, and, and paid cash for it. Uh, rather, it was significantly less than that, yeah. and uh, and which actually put up our return on investment yep. uh, significantly and also made we uh, made it possible for us to positively promote uh, these other businesses mm. to uh, to our database and to our clients. And, and the things you would offer them in return, did you say I'll put your logo on the invitation or I'll mention you by name at the event? Yeah. Uh, what were the things that you offered? We did, we did a few of those things. So once again, in the thank yous to yeah. making the book possible and the launch possible, we, we gave them a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of highlights and a lot of emphasis so that was one important thing we've also done follow-up emails saying hey if you have been looking for a, an event coordinator you should speak to Connie Tung from Fusion Global Events because she did she did yeah. an amazing job or the photographer who was there so um, so that's one one way mm -hmm. in which we've done it and of course there's an always an eternal gratitude debt as well and I think everyone did an amazing job at the at the launch so once again I have no hesitancy in, in terms of recommending the work that they all do which is a very high quality um, we also had logos display we had an overhead projector displaying on one of the walls so their logos were constantly featured and um, I think people just got all those touch points. They walked in, their aromatic senses were, you know, were firing on all cylinders. Uh, there were visual displays everywhere and uh, kinesthetic displays in this way. So there were a lot, like, we really tried to engage all the touch points and all the, all the different uh, senses of, of the people that were there. And, Beautiful. you know, there were different sponsors, kind of responsible for uh, different 
you know, activation of different stimuli there. Yeah. So, and tell us about um, you know the all important sales factor from the book launch. How were you able to uh, monetize the event? Um, did you get a number of orders? How did that work? Yeah, we got uh, we got good per capita orders again. Um, so what we did is uh, the MC held up the book at the event, said he'd slept with the book because uh, <laughs> it's so sexy. Um, and not in that kind of way, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he'd been at his bedside table the last few nights. He'd read through it uh, and, and loved it, so of course he held it up at the beginning, which mm. I think is great. Uh, we talked about the entire process of production and design, and I think that really engages people in the story mm. and the transparency of how a book goes from just an idea into into a physical format. Yeah. So, so you had order forms there that people were to fill out? Yeah, um, so everyone, everyone at the launch actually got a little pack uh, with a few little gifts and then order forms as well. They got a bookmark, hopefully that bookmark goes with buying the book. Uh, so everyone got a beautifully designed uh, little, not a brochure, but a, a folder yep. uh, with information and uh, we asked them to, to sign those up. We also have QR codes or QM codes that you may or may not be uh, familiar with, but it's um, it's huge in Asia at the moment and it's kind of looks like a barcode that's on uh, on drugs. Yeah, uh, it looks yeah. very squiggly and very different, but basically you can take an iPhone picture or a uh, Blackberry picture of it, uh, it converts it into a hyperlink that then takes you through to an order page for the book online. So we had people actually taking pictures of posters of QR codes and filling in orders that way uh, online. Very cool. And then um, uh, as well as via PayPal downstairs uh, at the registration desk. So we had we had lots of different ways for people to sort of uh, to put in their orders, and yeah. we wanted to be a little bit innovative with that. Great. And, and were yeah. you just selling single books, or did you have opportunity for people to buy like um, you know five copies or more, etc.? Yeah, we um, we did. There were several people who did buy more than one copy, so we didn't have special incentives to do it necessarily. Uh, with this book, I think our ambition now is to make it an international bestseller, so it's been very important for us to keep the retail price um, intact, yep. so just to, to count our orders towards that essential number of international bestselling status. So um, so we didn't do any particular incentives, maybe we could have, but um, yeah. yeah. It's all a learning experience. Absolutely. This is, this is fabulous. So what's your plan with this book um, moving forward? You've obviously got the goal that you put out there of making it an international bestseller. What are a couple of the uh, you know contributing factors that you're going to implement to uh, you know get the book there? Well, we've got uh, we've got uh, Australian Antill and Innovation Magazine now in Australia. They're doing a review on the book, uh, which is coming out uh, any day now in their next edition. We've got DQ Magazine Design Quarterly. Uh, it's also running a double spread on it. Uh, we've got uh, we've got this TV show, of course, Dale, which yeah, is a great exactly. opportunity to get to get the book out there. Um, and also, we've got some overseas opportunities. So we have a PR company in in Sweden that actually is looking forward to um, to launching the book over there. So we've got several things like that happening. Wow. I'm also in talks with a few a uh, few different conference organisers overseas yes. yeah. uh, that I'm hoping will stock the book at there at their next events where I will be speaking Beautiful. overseas as well. So so tell us the website, uh, if people want to grab their copy, where can they go? Um, what's the URL? It is www.thinkfunky and you'll see the title, it's uh, T-H-I-N-Q-U-E and then funky, F-U-N-K-Y dot com. So www.thinkfunky dot com. Okay, so that's where you go and uh, also you are a speaker as well and you speak about um, a lot of different uh, topics that are all obviously related to the book but if there are people out there in any part of the world that may be looking at, um, at a you know, speaker um, tell us about what you speak about and, uh, and also your personal website as well where you, um, you know, mention your, um, you know, your speaking um, topics etc. Absolutely. So the, the main topics that I speak on both in Australia and overseas are innovation, change management and generational trends. So if you, really, if you need a really infotaining, a thought provoking and a, a powerful and motivational session for people that are really looking to future proof their business brains, uh, look no further than www.think.com.au and that's think with a funny spelling again. Dale. So it's T-H? T-H-I-N-Q-U-E. Dot com .au. Dot com .au. Awesome. Well, we need to wrap this video up right now. It's been a pleasure having Anders here to tell us about this wonderful book. Uh, you know, again, just the amount of attention to detail and design 
uh, it just, um, you know, I wish you were able to hold this in your hands because it, uh, it really is uh, special. But you can always grab a copy, go to the website as mentioned, and please leave us your comments below. We'd love you to say a big uh, thank you to Anders for giving up his time and sharing his experience. And we'll make sure that all of those messages will get forward on to him. And we look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Get Published TV. Thanks again for watching. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Anders. Cheers. Cool. All right. Cool, cool, cool.